Hello, everybody. Um, cats outside playing with their turkey. Um, turkeys these days. It used to be that we had one turkey. Now we're into the turkeys. It's a new development, uh, as you some of you might know, that she's gotten two more turkeys and the adopted turkeys. And the parents of these turkeys were over here uh, checking on their well-being. And so Cat is sidetracked on that. So today we have a, a little different setup. You know how normally we open with a pre-show and all of that. Uh, what we're going to be doing uh, is a show on collectibles uh, each week. We've talked about that last week. Uh, this week we're doing a show on uh, action figure collectibles and Star Wars in particular, uh, since I don't really have any other action figures. <laughs> I know some some people might think of music, but there, obviously there's a lot of action figures that you could collect. Uh, John, show them the table real quick so they can see what we're doing. So we have a, a little collection of stuff that we pulled out of my collection, uh, some of which are really high-end uh, collectibles, such as the large Princess Leia and all those larger things. That's Sideshow, I believe, that does those, uh, the big guys. But there are other medium-sized ones that aren't quite as expensive. And then you get into these action figures, uh, the older ones in particular. Uh, go to Apple TV for one second, uh, John. So there's an example there of uh, some of the, the Princess Leia stuff you know getting pretty psychedelic price wise now ironically oh by the way ryan is here with us today go back to the wide shot for a second so there's ryan waving but ryan actually helped me uh pull out some of this stuff and in fact you saw that thing on ebay and it, it's kind of innocuous looking in fact that wasn't even the original that was that one it was right? that one right so this seems to be a pretty hot commodity. Am I on the right side of this picture? Here, should I go to this side? Okay. So this that was the one you just saw on eBay. So you kind of have to watch for these things. The you know, one to the right is even more. This is valuable. really rare. This is an original 77 um, of Kerry. That's, that was, you can, yeah, John's getting us a nice close up there. Uh, but these are pretty cool uh, to collect, although they've gotten kind of pricey, so you can't, uh, get two in it. So I would just give you a little preview about where we're going uh, with this whole thing. We're going to talk about collecting action figures. And then uh, we're also, uh, in general, uh, going to have our usual, we're going to have a little auction tonight that's a little different uh, than before because, uh, as some of you might be aware, we moved some of the archives recently from our warehouse to here. And with that, we moved part of the library uh, from there to here, and, and I looked through the library because I thought we hadn't done a book in a long time, and I came up with a couple of very cool items. So one of which is going to be an, au an auction item for tonight, and the other one is going to be something that we'll put for tomorrow. Is that what it's going to be? We'll list it. I'm going to list it. So here is one item. So this is my mother's copy of When the Lion Roars. This is a coffee table book. And you'll notice it has some, some sticky notes. So she actually went through this book and made some sticky notes relating to the museum. And if it, on the inside of this book, it has from an original vintage, it's going to be hard to see this. Actually, I'll come over to the table, John. We'll use the close-up camera for that. I'm going to come down to the table for a second. So in theory, that camera, zoom in on... Zoom in on that. See the Debbie Reynolds on the above her picture? It's okay. I think you could see that. So that was originally part, like a lot of her library books had that. Now we added to that, uh, we added this. So I've got stickers that I put in her books. I'm going close in on that, John. Did Kat show up? Kat's here. I'll write what? the names down. You got, well, conflicts of interest. Uh, so anyway, uh, so here, while we have the close-up camera, I might as well just show you the other thing. So it's this this book out of her library, her MGM book, plus you see this is her writing. So these are some of her handwritten notes. Uh, like in this case, we had those costumes. So she said... If you have a better one, make an 8x10 so that we were going to put a picture with the costumes and you could see she's making little notes of things that are in the book. 
So that's a pretty cool item. And with that, I'm going to, we're going to include an originally, original signed still picture. This particular one, I believe, has some authentication with it, right? Not that you it need does. more. Okay, so it comes with, I'm going to say, I'm dropping stuff. Uh, so this is in a little plastic collectible sealed thing with a with a certificate with it proving I, I would have told you that sort of signature anyway so i guess i could this is one case i can authenticate better than they can but anyway this is a collectible piece so those of you that are like sort of the pro collectors that like it in the plastic uh archival thing that comes with it in addition since the book really related to the museum here's an original piece of the hollywood motion picture museum go close on that john stationary and this is when and there's the original board of directors david walper janet lee jack haley jr etc uh and so and it comes with the original piece of stationery with the envelope so i put that with the book because really the book was part of the museum's business so that's i went down to the close-up camera for that cat's almost ready but i'll keep vamping here <laughs> look see look at our look at our little table doesn't that look cool oh. Uh, okay, so back over to me, John. So this, go to the close. So there's the, so it's it's the book, which is the coffee table book from MGM original with Debbie's personal handwritten notes, a real autograph picture and a collectible, can, I, I guess you call that sleeve, and the original stationery from the museum. All that will be in the book. This is pretty heavy, so there's going to be some shipping, obviously, going along with this, I would say this is five pounds at least. This is one of those big, you can see the scale. Beautiful book. I, I happen to love this book. I have another copy that's my copy, but I uh, that was sort of the museum's copy. So I thought you all might like to take a shot at that. And we always are doing costumes and things, so here's something a little unusual for tonight. Now, unrelated to tonight's auction item, Ryan's in town. And we've been up digging around. And one of the things that we dug up is this item. Now, um, do you want me to, you want to zoom in here, John? Or, I mean, how do you? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, let's zoom in on this. This is well worth zooming in on. That is a really big Now, this is going to be up for auction on the website. If you notice down here in the corner here, it says CFF. So that's Carrie Francis Fisher. Now, this was a writing book. It's leather bound, and it actually has very little in it. She never really did much with it. It was like too nice. But there is a page here that was her writings. And there's also something, a couple of very rare things with, that are in the book. One thing, these are one-offs. So the, not only is the, one, the book a one-off, but here's a handwritten lyric of Carrie's in her handwriting. And here is a Polaroid. I don't, let me walk up on this. This is worth coming up on the camera. Where is this, going to be? this is going to be on the auction site. So let's see if I can. Okay, there you go. So there's Carrie at, I remember this time. This was right after she got sober. She was like a year sober. And this is like her party after being sober for like a year. Would have been in the uh, 80s. And uh, anyway, so uh, this one-off po original photograph, there it is, from the 80s, handwritten lyrics of Carrie's in her writing book that's monogrammed in gold and leather. And that is going to be just left up on the site. I did put the, that's gonna be on the Facebook, Facebook site. And then we did put a little thing here for authenticating it as well, not that you'd need that given how rare that is. So that's going to be on the website. Which so they'll need to request to join if they're not already members. So if you're not part of the Debbie Reynolds Studio Store Facebook page, you can request to Ryan. What? Is it on? Okay. Anyway, that is, you need to join if you want to bid on this. We're going to put up a bunch of other stuff. We'll talk about that a little later. Like, this one will be up and stay up. The MGM book is tonight's auction, not this. Hit cat. Are you doing the Are you doing the action figure tonight as well? Oh, am, am yeah. I, can you hear me now? Here. Yes. 
You can hear me now? Yeah. Sweet. I'm on. Well, she's been um, out playing with her birds, so if you have anything to <laughs> s We've started the show. Do you know how long it takes to put away nearly four I know animals? exactly, because <laughs> I never see you. Not only feeding them, but putting them away, and they all have to go in certain orders, because if not, the roosters will fight and... Okay, you we're, know, so we're anyway, stay I'm on that camera. We're, we're blowing her away with this babies. light. What are we doing? We're blowing you away with oh this light. Oh my gosh, yes. There you go. Hi, everybody. Happy Saturday. It's Saturday night. And where are we? We're right here. The oh, Fisher I see. family is all together. We're having a good time tonight. Uh, I'm really excited to be here. I missed last night, and that was hard because I haven't done a solo show now in two weeks, which is like, what? So I have got to plan something for this week. I just have to because I think that uh, it's a must-do. And um, let's see who's here tonight. Shannon Johnston. Look at Shannon saying, oh, I'm so geeking out. She's geeking out over the stuff, which is really fun. Well, what are the comments? Maybe okay, I can answer a question. Look. Hi, Susan Hirsch. Is it your birthday tomorrow? Did I see that? Seth Robicho says I'm glowing. Well, you know what? I am happy. Well, there was so much light on her, we were welding. But... It's the cat cosmetic, Seth, and you know that more than anybody. And yes, I did get the ring of fantasy, which is going in the oven tonight. I'm really excited about that. So just to let you know, Seth Robicho. Hello, Paula Mickle, Terry Dixon. I love your hair longer. I was looking at your Facebook page tonight. William Padrone. Great Saturday night to all. May every day, every new day shall be unwrapped like a precious gift, as quoted by the late Harry Harrison. Well, thank you. That is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Philip Bambarger, hi! Long time, Philip. Uh, Diane Vogt, hello, Diane. Hello. Carol DeWald, Kimber Sissons. Hey, beautiful yourself, Kimber. Uh, Ted Sands, hello, Ted. How's everything in your end of the woods? Are you coming out this year? Beth Hughes, Ron Hibbs. Hey, Ron, just got your CD out. Um, Anna, Papa jo Anna Papa George, you. Hello, Anna. Uh, Anita oh, yeah. Anderson. Oh, I did miss you a lot. Yeah. Gina Selman. Hello. Sharon Emma Rosa. He, she said, Hap, Todd. Todd's birthday is on the 24th. It is coming up. Stephen Edwards. Oh, Ferruccio is here. Hello, Frank. I, I just, Brian is, do you know how happy I am right now, Frank? Because I am, first of all, I'm sitting in, I wish I could show you the theater from this uh, angle because it's so beautiful right now. But um, the thing that's most beautiful is sitting in the front row, and that's Ryan Clements is in the house. He is. I love you, Ryan. I do. I'm so happy he's here. And then I'm going to see you in Pennsylvania in just a few less, weeks. in a few weeks. I'll be there hypnotizing, reading people's minds on March 11th at the Allen Theater in Anvil, Pennsylvania. Um, it's so great. There's 300 seats, and we have some seats left. We have sold. We're nearing half. Yeah, so that's good because a lot, a lot of people will buy at the door. We, you and I have been down this road with uh, theaters and you know, so it's going to be really a great show and fun. And then Saturday we're doing a, a um, screening of Bright Lights, and Todd's going to be taking questions um, via Zoom up on the movie theater screen. So it's a big weekend. I, I'm excited. No. And I get hey, to see John. Ryan again and a lot of you. No, and I'm going to do a meet and greet afterwards, so I'm really excited One, two, because three. a lot of you are going to come. Yes? One, two, three, four, five. Is that showing up separate? John? One, two, three, four, we're five. We're doing a sound check. Okay, he's on. Well, I just want to make sure we have him separated out there. So, uh, let <laughs> so Seth, I was glowing because he had too much light on me. <laughs> oh, my God. Angie Montalvo. Hello, Fisher family. Barbara Hammond is here. Julie Peasley is here. Nikki Grandchamp. I wonder if I'm saying that right. Nikki Grandchamp. He said he's very excited to bid on the book. So if you want to start the bidding, let's go ahead and well, do that. actually, there are... We're doing several items tonight, so don't... No, 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 no. The book is... is we only have is two. The two one. items. Two items. Okay, that's good. Uh, right. Or All right. Are we do this no, we're, we're doing do two this items, or otherwise or it gets we'll really do that confusing. On the website. Okay. Yeah, it gets confusing. All right, so here's what's happening. 
the book, of course, is going to be on the Debbie Reynolds Studio Store side. It'll be up for a week. You mean Carrie's book? Carrie's book. Yeah. The MGM Debbie book is tonight. is tonight and a carry item. So we're at, we added because we felt like what we else? were slacking. So what we did is we came up with an action figure. No, and it's Hexion. It's a Hexion figure. So right here is a carry. The, there are three things coming with this. So there's an original picture oh, of Carrie. that's beautiful. That's yeah. really beautiful shot. This is an original print of her. Uh, I don't think anybody has this that I'm aware uh -huh. of. I, I, you know, so I there's, don't think so. So that, and it comes with an original carry action figure. Now, how old is that action figure? Now, let's bring Ryan up here. Come here, Ryan. Yes. Ryan, come Get up here. Come here. Yes, you need to come up. We got to have the whole thing. Come on in. down. That's right. It's a new car. <laughs> come on, you sit right there. Okay. And I'll sit right up here. How about I do this? Yeah. No, sit, sit in the chair. You sit in the chair. Yeah. See, now we can all be there. We there. Go. Yes. All right, so here, you take this, and you explain what the heck Well, this is, uh, this is vintage. It's, uh, at, is this my camera? Yeah, that's yours over there. Uh, go on John her close-up camera, see what uh, happens, John. This is a vintage 22-year-old. This is not, of course, from the original collection. Um, but it's 22 years old? Yeah, it's a, tw a 2000 figure. It is in great condition. Yes, it is. I don't know if, I mean, it, I don't even think a slight bend, but this is in really good condition. And it's Princess Leia. Yeah. And what's, is this a little card of some sort? Collector card. This one came with a collector. They all didn't do that, but uh, this one comes with uh, some kind of little collector's now, card. Now, see, you, you know a lot about this because you collect these. Well, you included these I call them toys as well. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. Uh, no, he calls them toys. He Zoom in. I, I, and then He's I learned. know not to do that because, I mean, you should, I mean, the hair no. stands. It gets, it gets he, right. The hair you stands you up on the back of the thing. His hackles are standing up over It gets that. very uptight about um, that. Yeah, so these are two original. Use your close-up on that, John. Yep. These got, are two original 1977 Topps trading cards. He's going to go to camera one. Go to camera one, John. Okay. As, as you were. Featuring Carrie. Yeah. Princess Leia. Okay, zoom in on that. There we go. There you go. He's going to zoom way in on that. There you go. So these John, are 1977. You yes. And you'll get those as well. Now those are from 77. These are these are original uh, from the original collection of Star Wars. Now I don't say? know any. Let me just. So I don't know anything about collecting, mm -hmm. say, these cards. Sure. So uh, I've have seen. I had one. I had a few of these myself because I actually. Mm -hmm had some that were relating to the filming of Star Wars. Oh. They actually had some of the behind-the-scenes shots. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember those? I do. And so I, I actually collected those for my camera work. Uh, so given your experience, what are these actually worth in the real world? <laughs> I'll, I'll say well, two Well, not, not like one, absurd. Just one, anything Star Wars related is you can't predict it. It's, it's what anyone's willing to pay for it. Star Wars collectors are not usual collectors because the, it depends on what the condition of these cards. I mean, you could probably get the whole collection for a hundred bucks. They may not be in perfect condition, but there are certain cards that if you have them in prime condition are worth hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Well, I just want you to look at this card right now. Have, go to Apple TV for one second. Bring up this card right here. Apple TV. Oh, uh, well, now what you'd have to, <laughs> now that's a, that's, uh, I can see right there, it's they graded. had that graded. That's right. Yeah, so I would be curious to see what that, this one would not be graded as high because the edge, it, it depends on the distance. What on earth are we looking at, eBay? Yes. Yeah, the, but, the, uh, wow. Now do you see, I can see if, do you have that for everyone to see? Yes, they're looking at, that, that you, is what's going out. Do you see on the left and the right how perfectly the edges are the people are saying they can't hear you well I, I can't hear myself either sometimes but I don't know if that's a long time ago or how long John do you see my meters moving yeah, I'm looking to check down there here. okay well the one the two yeah I'm, I'm, I'm out I'm going out you're good okay well the edges the yellow the the yellow spacing of how that picture is is not the same you see this has a little bit more or this has a little less space. The way it was cut. The way it was cut. So that all plays into what it's worth, believe it or not. Yeah, the one below it actually has thinner cut lines over yes. here. So that's you but, okay. So it's listed for nine ninety nine. I think that's probably high. Yeah. Well, they, these. I'm not saying this is what we expect. I'm just trying to say that these are the. This is what happens. To this. Someone could buy. 
someone could definitely buy it because it's Star Wars related. And when anything is Star Wars related, some people may need this card. And they right. want this card. And and it's not in bad condition, no, right? No, not at all. It does have, it's just minor little edging. Yeah. But it's a cool thing to display with the figure, especially since the figure Well, and let Carrie's. me ask you this. I mean, this stuff came from Carrie's house. Yeah. So that's... it takes on a, I mean, not to say that Carrie was collecting cards. Correct. But this, we found multiple boxes of stuff that mm -hmm. Carrie had been given as samples or stuff that fans had sent her. Right. Who knows how it all arrived. And it ended up in her garage. Mm -hmm. And many, many, many years ago, she's cleaning out the garage, and Carrie was like, get rid of all this stuff. My mother was like, oh, no. No, no, we're not doing that. It was like one of a manic moment, right? She's like, and my mother was like, no. And you see, there's a box. If you look at it, it says ranch on it. Yes. So off it goes to the ranch. And it's been there, you know, it stayed there for 20 years. Okay, Ryan, his sound is squelched and weird, and a lot of people are saying it. So That's that because Ryan's on the same frequency. This is what I was saying, John. Give me the okay, handheld mic. Okay, so we'll mic. try to get that fixed. No, 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 just meantime, turn. Ryan, turn off your uh, headset. I think you're just on the wrong frequency. There you turn go. We'll get him on the right up. frequency. By the way... Um, no, we're going to give him a handheld. People help. have already started bidding on the MGM book. Two, two, and two. the last bid I see on it is Catherine Bradley, and she bid $150. So that's where the book is now, just in case two. anyone else wants to bid. Just take that, Ryan. That is where that is well, at. Well, the, the book is the beginning of the conversation. Oh, wait. Uh, Shannon Johnston, MGM book 300. No, here, here's the thing about, I want to talk about the book one second, just so we all understand. So if you went down to the... If you could find this book, which you probably could on eBay or somewhere, it's probably a $100 book, having belonged to nobody. But the idea that Debbie was one of the last MGM contract players, and uh, I can, uh, there, we only had two of these books in our between both libraries. This one was at her house, mm -hmm. and one was at the museum. You could see she was using this book to reference things we were putting on display in the museum. So it has some cool overtones and that's why we included the stationary and the and the signed autograph picture the debbie autograph picture alone we've been getting you know good money for over a hundred over a hundred dollars plus she wrote little post-it notes in there the post-it notes handwritten so this is a very cool item the the second thing that we're doing the carry item tonight which is the action figure plus the cards you know potentially there's plus a photograph yeah. Right, and a, and a one-off photograph. I mean, there, there's a lot of potential value there. I want everybody to get a great deal. I'm not, we're not doing this for the purpose of not, uh, but again, you know, these are personally things owned by them. You're not going to find anything on Star Wars, uh, uh, on Carrie personally, on eBay. Uh, I very much doubt and it. And you give a COA from yourself. Right, so these are from. from us. But the reality is, is that you're not going to get Carrie stuff. And that's why I was going to the trouble of explaining the story about how this stuff went from her garage Barb over. Barb Kevern is the highest bidder at the moment at 600 for the MGM book. Well, I, I, again, I, you don't need to do that every minute. I, I'm just moving oh, along here. Oh, I let here. people know so that they know where to bid. Cause it's oh, well, it doesn't show up in the stream? Or it does, not? but the it, it's hard to keep up with that. So that's the only reason I do it. Okay, everybody's loving that you sound much better. Yes. Um, and, I, you know, what, do you, what are you going to show for show and tell tonight? Well, so what we're going to do tonight, since it's all, and we've, that's why I started this, yeah. we're going to stay in this subject. So we are going to do action figures and sort of things that relate to action figures, Star Wars. And I don't normally do, you know, we normally do like a big Debbie thing, but this is really... I mean, not that it wasn't invented yet, <laughs> this this type of collectible. The last movie that Debbie made that was a big movie of hers, of course, was like Molly Brown. Years later, they made a couple of really beautiful porcelain dolls, but there was never any collectibles the way Star Wars was. And in fact, Star Wars revolutionized the entire action figure slash toys slash collectibles of all types. And and Carrie used to joke a lot about this, and that is what we're going to talk about tonight. So having said that, let's go for it. So, so Ryan's coming with me. So Lose Todd's that show over. and tell is Turn with that other Ryan one tonight. Well, no, Kat's going to be involved. No, I'll be, a, I'll be up here talking about the folks at home. Oof. and So we're going to do our best, and we're going to be playing to that camera, right, John? Yeah. Center camera. So we're going to do our best to talk about collecting these action figures, but also the things that relate to it. And there are also things on this table that we're going to put up for sale. So there's other things. But you mean on, on the studio on store? On the studio store website. Now, okay. one, of the, one of the things that Carrie uh, loved 
the most and used to joke about it a lot, of course, was the over-merchandising of her name. Uh, and she used to tease Lucas about it endlessly. And, and so some of the things she used to talk about a lot, in particular, was this item right here. So this is a uh, shampoo bottle. Still got the shampoo in it, never been opened, sealed. And it, this was Lather Up with Leia. So they had absolutely no, I mean, just zero morals about selling anything that connected to anything and merchandise everything. And uh, that's why Carrie used to say, like at the roast, when she did the Spielberg Lucas roast, she said, uh, you know, every time I look in the mirror, I got to send Lucas a couple of bucks because he owned her like this. And so here's Carrie as a shampoo bottle. Now, the thing is, I don't know what this goes for, but it'd be fun to look it up. I'm not selling this because the only one I have, but I just wanted to show you that these were things that Carrie used to joke about. You might know more about it. This was the other one that she thought was so fantastic. Nikki Luongo said, lather up with Leia. That's right. Carrie <laughs> talked about that endlessly. And here is another one of Carrie's favorite, the Pez dispenser. Oh, yes. So here's Leia's head on a Pez dispenser. And Carrie used to joke about how this was such a weird thing for her because Billy, her daughter, could pull her head back and pull a wafer out of her neck. <laughs> and Carrie thought that was weird, you know, to be a person that had a, a toy out like that, or whatever you want to call a Pez dispenser. But anyway... You can call that a toy. That's a toy? Sure. Okay, so that's a toy. Now, so uh, we're going to go back to the action figures in just one second, but th so there were other things that came along over the years with, that they would come to Carrie and they would, uh, there would be one-offs. So one of the one-offs was the Madonna statue. You see this one? Here, I'll hold it with the speakers in the background. So there's the, the Madonna statue that was a famous Greek statue, probably one of the most famous Greek oh, statues ever. Oh, that's a beautiful piece. And, and they that. put Leia's head on top of it. And so this has a marble base. Now, I have no idea. There were only a few of these made, maybe two. It was like a sample. And they sent it to Carrie. And I think she had two of them originally. Uh, anyway, so there's one of them. We're obviously not selling that, but I just want you to see. By the way, if you find this, <laughs> grab it, <laughs> because I don't know. I know they didn't make many of those. So that's a, a really rare item. And then, then we get back to the action figure for one second, and the rarest one of all, I, I mean, it's not necessarily one. the most valuable, but it's the rarest, is Gary the dog. So there if you seems to be a little confusion about what is up tonight for auction that's carries. Okay. So you'll now go I, over that is again. sort of okay, I'm going to read we're going to read we're going to do we'll come back to that. Tonight we are selling what we talked about earlier and I'll go back and do it again. We are selling one action figure of carries that's about 20 years old. In fact, go to Ryan. He's holding it right now behind door number 1. Just stay right there. There he is. <laughs> so we are selling the original photograph of Carrie it's a one-off picture. We are selling an, a 20-year-old action figure. Uh, Ryan said it's in more or less mint condition. Whoops. And we're selling two of these collector cards, one of which uh, I just looked up and showed you on eBay. If you go to eBay again, go to Apple TV, John. Uh, what is meant by one-off? That means there's only one. Uh-oh. One-off means there's a v one or two or three, just a very, very limited run. So there is the, there's the card that he has. Uh, just to give you an idea, and I'm not saying this one is not graded, it's not in that condition, but I just wanted you to see how collectible these things can be. So we're doing the, the, the original 20-year-old action figure, the original photograph. When I say that's a one-off photograph, I mean I only have one print of that. So there was, there was probably a photo session, and maybe we got four different images from that shoot. That's one of the four that's it. Now, I've never seen that picture anywhere else. That doesn't mean there, somebody didn't make another copy somewhere. But to me, it's a rare photograph. And I have a lot of pictures of Carrie. And all of that's <laughs> together. That's One a bundle, a Carrie so bundle. The, the two, act, the two car collector cards, the action figure and the, the photo of Carrie, really from later on. She's probably in, she's in her 50s here. But I think it's a beautiful picture of her. I actually oh, I do really too. love this picture. I think it's great. So stay back on, go back to... Uh, I guess you'd have to go to camera two on that, probably pick him up. Yep, there he is. So, so the carry item, I think, is up to 325. Let me look. I just want to say so people don't have to go. Carry bundle. It. Carry bundle. 
Carrie Bundle so is. So that's tonight. I don't want to get everybody. We have this could get confusing because we're talking about collectibles in right. the same vein. But I didn't want to talk about collectibles in the about these kind of collectibles, and not have any available. And so we're going to put up tonight that bundle, but also tomorrow Ryan's going to list other ones on the site. So we're going to give you all a chance if you want to collect some of these things. There will be maybe 10 other items or whatever we find. Uh, so we'll get some other things up on the website um, for, for tomorrow. Tomorrow. Uh, in the meantime, Time we, were, to be we determined. were just discussing these kinds of collecting. Uh, the people collect any, uh, lots of different things. Uh, this stuff in the last few decades has become very collectible, starting in 77. This was the original. This is the most rare and most expensive that I'm aware of. Right, Ryan? Oh, absolutely. So that, that's the original 77 Kenner. And uh, that's in great condition. So in theory, you know, th this is thousands of dollars. So not everybody's going to collect that. What's weird is if you just had that toy, it, it wouldn't be worth anywhere near this kind of money, right? Tell them about how that works. Say you just had that. See, and that's the thing because I have that figure in my house right now that original. And part of my love for Star Wars was these were the first toys I collect, like I played with. Right. So, um, so I don't know. I couldn't value. tell you all the details about who lives on this planet and right. who this and the other. That's not me, but it's the nostalgia. It's the feeling, like Star Wars and the feeling you get. Um, so, all, a lot of my early ones are out of the boxes. And, and tell me what that does to the value. <laughs> Just play with it at that point. At that point. Some people, I will say, though, some people do pay money for loose figures. I mean, you're not getting a lot of money for them, but uh, if, it, if it's taken care of, I know that there's one alien figure from the original Star Wars that goes for hundreds of dollars. Even I have it, out. but it's not in good condition. Well, I think the, more, the, the lesson to be learned, though, is that if you're going to collect this and expect it to go up in value, you better be looking for the original packaging, oh, right? For sure. So that is why, like the item that we're auctioning tonight, it's important that that was not smashed in a box, even though That's it right. was thrown in a box. You know, this survived and is in really good shape. You can hear, I'll hold it. And even you. if it weren't in good shape, because it was in Carrie's possession, gives it... Some value. Yes. But again, like the, the way that we look at this is, like <laughs> literally when this stuff was in Carrie's garage, Literally, it was almost going to be sent to the Goodwill. Of course, this is a long time ago. Oh, Maybe it pains in, me to think it, of It would that. have been in the 80s, let's say, middle to the late 80s. And instead of going to the Goodwill, my mother was very, very smart when it came to saving everything. And it wasn't an accident like she thought, I'll just save everything because I have no idea what anything is worth. She literally saw the value in things when no one else did. Mm -hmm. So this, this type of thing, this wouldn't be sitting here if it wasn't for my mother, because she rescued that box, two boxes, and wrote ranch on it, and a couple weeks later, it's sent up to the ranch, it ends up in the warehouse. I don't even find it until years, maybe four or five years ago, I found the box, I sent it to Vegas. We never even opened the box until a couple of weeks ago, because we were moving stuff from the warehouse to here. So some half of it we had found. You, when were you here? So in the summer, summer. we had found that other box. We did. So we found one box in the summer, and we found the other box way later. So I'm just saying, it, life is funny, and maybe you should hold on to your funny little and you things. Were, uh, honestly, you were talking about estate auctions last week. And I see in the Star Wars collectors groups that I do follow and belong to on Facebook, just to see what's going on, I will tell you a lot of people find these figures in a state auction. Yes. And just for, out of nowhere. And, and maybe they may, not for a lot of money. And not, not, I mean, my mouth drops from time to time when I see, you know, maybe this one or, you know, the Return of the Jedi, and they've gotten a steal because it was a, you know, an auction, uh, an estate auction. Uh, an older woman, an older man, you know, had, must Emptied have been the whole, kids' that's bedroom. It. Yeah. And they're in the original packaging. Well, so having said that, we, we put on display here. John, let's go for the close-ups. We'll show them some of the things, because this is show and tell, because I'm not selling these. Uh, and uh, hold on one second, because someone is asking me, Barbara Rue. Hi, Barbara. Someone is asking, uh, Barbara's asking, actually, uh, what the MGM book is up to. I believe it is up to $600. I'm, it's hard to keep up with 
with that. Yeah. It, uh, um, and read people's texts and, ooh, hold on one second. <laughs> Carrie, <laughs> Carrie's item is, uh, is at 425. Okay. And the uh, MGM book looks like it is $600. Yes, okay, I so that's a little update. Back to show back and tell. Back to you. Okay. Oh, also, I just want to say to Sharon Amoroso, who said she has all her Hallmark Star Wars Christmas ornaments, I got to tell you, I, I was at a, a friend's house in Arkansas at Christmas, and they had two Christmas trees, and they had both trees were just loaded with these Star Wars ornaments from Hallmark, and I was like, uh, you know, until they turned them all on and they were communicating with each oh. other, and it was unbelievable we might need to get those I i've mean, never even seen truly like unbelievable i may need to get they've that. been collecting them for years so sharon amoroso is talking about her collection and as cheesy as it sounds when you 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 can't believe how cool these ornaments are i mean they there's a there's like a brain that and they communicate with each other that. and and they talk and and it glow and it's pretty cool sorry to interrupt just that thought sounds I epic say. to me i know no, i, I mean, know what i'm getting ryan for christmas but you know what's <laughs> i'll tell you what's what's funny what's funny yeah exactly what's funny about that is when when i was growing up my grandmother um when i became a teenager knew that i loved norman rockwell and i've told a story on the air before where i'd met norman rockwell with carrie and my mom and it influenced me to want some to collect some norman rockwell my grandmother signed me up for these this Norman Rockwell plate collection with uh, Franklin Mint, I believe it was. And then every month they'd give you another Rockwell. And, I, and it was marginally interesting, but to be honest with you, it never really turned me on. I didn't really know how I would ever display them. And in the end, it, it's, they never went up in value. So it's just interesting because that was all of the same time this was going on. Had she bought me a bunch of these, I, you'd have a million dollars worth of action figures. Instead, you've got a stack of these collectible plates worth 50 bucks. And it was all at the same time, and it would have been even less money for the action figures. The plates were like $15. And you know what's interesting is when the prequel movies came out, what was that, 2001, 2003? Even I felt guilty of this. Everyone rushed to collect those figures because they knew what the value of these original ones were, ah. but they overproduced... Sure. So now they aren't, you know, I have, you know, dozens of the of the newer ones, but they're not worth anything near what these hmm. original ones so are. So is there something that people can do to study up on this? Is there a book on this subject? Um, I don't know that there's a book as much as, you know, for me, I there are two or three on Facebook, Star Wars collecting groups, and people sell their things, they want to buy things, they request things, and I see, that's kind of where I see some of this value. Like that figure over there next to C-3PO, oh, this one. that one is also a worth a bundle. And I have seen that in, uh, I was telling Todd earlier, the, the, the case itself in ratty condition goes for hundreds of dollars. But you have, you know, and if you open up the front, you can see the figure, and the figure's in, you know, unbelievable condition. That is also a... What's funny about this is I would never expect this to have significant value, but you could see does. that it's part of that original That's type it. of printing and everything. Uh, so what we're going to do, we are going to put up mm -hmm. uh, tomorrow certain mm -hmm. action figures. Uh, so you should watch, because we're going to put up some cool stuff. And we, whatever we might have two of or something uh, that right else. Here we have a few. Okay, so he brought some examples. So stuff going up tomorrow. These um, will go up. These will go up tomorrow. All right, so here we go. So tomorrow, here's a Darth, an original Darth Vader. And those I, are again, all 20, 20 years, years old. old. They're this one's even older, right? Or is this I one think that one's from 1995. So that's even older. A Han Solo from 95 and another one yep. out of this series. I mean, you got a bunch of these. Don't you have like 10 of these? Yeah, we have quite a few, and we have some, uh, yeah. And they have their little pl cards with them. And so if you really have any interest, buy, you know, the other thing that a lot of people did and is... And they, they were carries. Well, that's the key. But they also bought these, for people bought these for their kids in the hopes that it might be a collection. Like if your parents or my grandmother had done that for me with this stuff, had the foresight... Now, this is already stuff that's been through, like you said, they only made so many of these, and that's why that's worth that. Mm -hmm. Then they made a second generation of it, and it's worth X, right. less than the first one. And then you get down to the fact that eventually they made 100,000 of them, 
So these Return of the Jedi's, or yeah, the yeah. Return of the Jedi's. I mean, you can get these for pretty reasonable. I would say even a lot of the toys. I have some toys that I've bought in the last ten or fifteen years that I got at a pretty good price in mint condition because that movie just isn't doesn't have the same value as the original. Sure. Most everyone bought these toys and played with them like I did. Oh yeah, and they, so the I've fact that, that you had a few left over, who would have thought to hold on to those and keep them in the well? Again, it wasn't. Container. It really wasn't. It was an accident. It just all was thrown in a box, mm -hmm. and it wasn't a plan. Uh, I'd, I'm sure she'd love to tell you it was all on purpose, you know. Mm -hmm. By the way, if you noticed in the background, zoom in on this a second, John. So th this is Sideshow who makes these really high-end pieces. I mean, I this thing is piece. shockingly is so, beautiful. It is so... It is so beautiful. It really is, and it's the the care in which they do the And I the never liked with. these things. I, I People used to come to me and want me to, uh, you know, sign off or endorse these things, and I'm like, go fish. This thing... I endorsed. I was like, that is the most beautiful rendition of Carrie as Princess Leia. And normally when you carve something like this and you make a three-dimensional image, <laughs> people look fat or they don't look like themselves. It's so difficult to actually produce something that is true to the actual person. Trust me, it's really hard to do. Yeah. Even the action figures are nowhere near at that level. You know, I mean, it's not even close. But they also made an R2-D2. And they made a C-3PO. Uh, and I'm not sure what other ones they made, but I have those three because uh, those are it's, my favorite It appears characters. that Darth Vader is a very popular uh, character. I, the ladies. He is. Yeah, and, and Janie uh, Sice, she, she's uh, retired. She was uh, an attorney and still is, of course, but she just retired. And she said Darth Vader is her spirit animal, more or less. <laughs> but well, what I like to do is I always say to people, so if I go somewhere and I feel like I'm getting jerked around, maybe a store or trying to order something. I like to say, you know, that I'm Princess Leia's brother. And they all go, oh, really? That's cool. So you're Todd Fisher, Carrie Fisher. And they start putting that all together. And I said, now, if you think about this a little further, if I'm Carrie Fisher's brother, then Darth Vader is my father. And right now, my father is watching us. And this transaction is not going well. And I have zero control over <laughs> him. Nobody has control of him. You've seen how he behaves. I mean, he wipes out planets for less. So I'm just saying this might affect how you're behaving and the deal you're about to give me or not. And, and believe me, it gets it, it works every time. <laughs> Everybody gets shaken up because they don't know if I'm really serious or not. And of course I am. Not really. Anyway, so another item that's going up tomorrow. If John, if you zoom in on these little guys, what would you call these, Ryan? You could call those toys, I think. They're figurines, maybe. Figurines. Are they going up? Yeah, they're going to go as a oh, set. Oh, those are cool. Yeah. We're going to sell them as a set. Yep. They've been in our You're house for a long just, time. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. they've just been sitting. I've had them on a shelf. I didn't really know what I to do. I saw them above the fireplace. Right. Well, I pulled them out Next of a box, and then I was like, what the hell is this? Tell Nebula them what. The is there. Um, Luke? Yeah, Luke is there. I'm sure there's more, right? Did they have the whole... These, uh, to be honest, I have not really seen these before. I mean, I've seen them, but I, I'm not really too familiar. These just look like... Well, they're substantially larger, as you can see, than the action figures themselves. They're four times the size. So it's a they're whole light. different... Okay, you guys have to see this because we... someone just sent it. Let me see who it is. Peter Frenzese. Frenzese. Yeah. He put a really cool link in the... In the um, feed. In the feed. And it's the ultimate guide to vintage Star Wars action figures. Yes, so I've I think seen we that. should buy that. I've seen that. I okay. haven't. I don't know. So it, but I I've will seen get that. that. Thank you get so much, Peter. We get one for Ryan and one for us. Okay. 1997. These figures are nice. From. 97. All right. So yeah, they're 20. So these are vintage as well. I mean, there. Believe me, I'm sure there's no end to all this. The, the thing that's unique about this stuff is that it was obviously <laughs> in our control in our warehouse belonged it was in Carrie's house or garage whatever eventually ends up in storage and you know and hopefully we'll go out and make somebody happy with this uh, so even though I'm showing you a lot of different collectibles here uh, we are going to offer some of them tomorrow uh, wow. now it's one tonight just to remind you we've got one going one action figure tonight of Carrie uh, or Leia uh, well they're one as you know and, and the photograph and a couple of cards. So we're going to have that little set. So we'll, we'll show you again when we go back to the seat. We're also doing a Debbie item tonight, the MGM 
coffee table book that belonged to her. It's got the, her names in it, some notes handwritten by her in it. Very unusual, very rare. I don't normally give up things like that, but I had two books, and they both had similar kind of notes and things. It was clear that she had worked in both. So I felt like I could share, you know, one book with all of you. Uh, and I, in the old days, there wouldn't be no place for that because I would need a book, you know, at the ranch or at the warehouse or the archive, and my mom would want one. Uh, and that is what this was. This this one happened to be in her house. And so. I'll say too, like these figures, these figurines yep. here. They're, I mean, they're probably not worth a ton of money. But I will say, like at the estate auction, I bought uh, some plates, four plates. And again, if you just take the plates at face value, you know they may not be the most expensive things in my collection, but they're the most prominently featured. They're the cool, like when people come and look at my stuff. That's what I take them to first because they were hers. They were part of the whole thing. So, well, I think anything yeah. like this, I think, is the same thing. Well, uh, that's right. And when I when I collect something, the most important thing about it is where did it come from? Whatever that is, you know, who owned it? I mean, you could have a book. That same coffee table book you could probably buy for a hundred dollars on eBay, but it's, it was never owned or no, you know, annotated by Debbie Reynolds. So and so the provenance is everything, and and who touched it and played with it, and that's the story that you tell. He's got the plates sitting there, and he tells the story. You know, these were carries. There, there's when I when I collect things, I'm always thinking about that. Uh, obviously, not everything has that story, but wouldn't it be nice to know the story? Last week, if you remember, I was talking about lenses, and uh, I have them sitting here still. So we we I showed you all this lens that I had found. And, uh, you know, I was showing you a little bit of the history of this company and all that. But I'm going to be looking. You know, there were probably not a gazillion of these out there. I mean, did this belong to Wesson or Ansel Adams or somebody iconic? You know, if you could ever prove that, you know, that makes it even more interesting than the lens that it already is. So, you know, that's why the Godfather lenses, which I have here, you know, this is an expensive set of lenses anyway. But the fact that, that Gordon Willis, the director of photography, and, and, you know, and Coppola used them on The Godfather and many other films, you know, that gives it a whole nother value. And, and we're not, we're talking about a similar thing here. These are obviously, you know, high-end collectibles. I, I have, uh, Janie says the sideshow figure of Princess Leia is on eBay for $929. Is, is, is their stuff usually that expensive? It is that expensive, by the way. And by the way, that's, Probably not a bad price because I think when this you're was not getting rid of that. That's no, your baby. no, no. I'm just showing people what he's what you show can, and telling. This is show, show and tell. Show I, and tell. Imagine we're in uh, Mrs. Fitchman's class in third grade, <laughs> and I'm you know bringing my stuff in and <laughs> probably was in trouble all the time for going too far with showing things. But I have in my possession, never to be sold, a a uh, go to cat John. Yeah, a um. A letter that a note that your teacher sent home to Debbie, and it said that you like to talk a lot. Well, I think it was <laughs> actually a little more corrective than that. No, it was a great note. But no, but I, it was well written. It was it was crafty because it was crafty, you, you don't want to criticize. So there is a teacher's craft to that. I will uh, yes. say there is a well, certain and you don't want to piss off. Oh, certain wait, parents. what else did she say? Do you remember? Because it was the cutest thing. Well, yeah, yeah. No, he's he definitely talk, too talkative and. Does it know, but there's you know what? certain and, boundaries and, and are missing. And that's one of like my favorite <laughs> things about you is you're, you're a great raconteur, you know? Well, I would just tell you that I endorsed this product. They sold out instantly on Sideshow, and they only make a yes. certain amount of these, and I think there's a number on there. So that's maybe not I a think bad that price. that's actually, yeah. in my opinion, and I, I, would, I never collected, <laughs> I never had, I would never have this stuff in my house until that. That just changed the game for me. This is such quality stuff. That, to me, it was like, I mean, obviously they gave that to me. Thank you very much. But I would have paid a grand for that. And then I think some. the newer, the one of her from the newest movies. I've seen that. I have was, that one. Um, but it's not that big. No, but it, I think, I, I, I also think it sold out. I remember looking at it. I but do I have think that it goes one. four or five. I think it started at four or five hundred dollars. Uh, Peter Franzi, 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 Franzi said that he paid... 
uh, $600 when it was released. Okay, so there you go. So that, you see, they go up in value. Right, well, and, and by the way, they're not, in, they in my opinion, when something is this great, too, and there is a limited number, this is a wise investment in your own posterity. That is a great item. I don't say that about everything. I think that you could overpay for anything. So obviously, if you can get something for a good price, that's smart. If you can get something owned by somebody famous for the, uh, what we we'll call sort of the retail price, that's, that's okay too, because you have a double way of getting your money out if you ever need to. I have a friend of mine that collected stuff like this, and at a certain, and I mean, people thought he was insane. He had, like, worse than you. He had, like, four rooms at his house. It was like Ferruccio with Jane Mansfield. Rooms <laughs> full of toys and, and action figures and all this stuff. And everybody thought he was absolutely nuts. Later on, when he became, like, 50 years old, he started selling this stuff. He never worked another day in his life. He just sold a little this and that, and, 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 you know, all this stuff was thousands of dollars, and everybody thought he was nuts. Literally became a multimillionaire selling toys out of his room that everybody wrote him off. Well, that's my mother's story, right? She, she collected these costumes and these props, and the same bunch of people said, this stuff is, Debbie's gone crazy. She's collecting a bunch of old costumes. It's, she'd go to a friggin' costume shop or Halloween shop. I mean, what is she doing? It's insane. She's lost her mind. She's paying thousands of dollars for all this. Well, my mother was looking at it as a rescue mission. She didn't really look at it as how much is this going to be worth in 30 years. But the greatest story in the world is she paid a thousand dollars for the Marilyn Monroe subway dress. And when we sold it, it went for 6.2 million dollars. They thought she was a genius all of a sudden. That same bunch of people that had written her off as a nutbag <laughs> said, you're, you're, she's a genius. They wrote her up in Forbes. I mean, Debbie Reynolds in Forbes magazine. I mean, we're, that's completely like oil and water. And you know water. what? Uh, but, uh, and, and she was very good friends with Warren Buffett, but he didn't really particularly believe in her vision. Oh, not particularly. And so when you have, and Warren Buffett is a nice man. I'm, you know, not trying to say anything because they were very good friends. But if Warren Buffett, who is like the ultimate businessman, said that to you, and you still have the courage to move forward and, and do it anyway. You well, know, like it's, that, that, that to me But is here's incredible. the moral of that story. Yeah. They don't know it all now, do they? No matter how freaking smart Warren Buffett or the rest of these people are, they don't know everything about everything. Yeah. And they certainly don't know what the markets of certain things are going to do. And they certainly didn't see this coming. And they certainly didn't see the Debbie thing coming. And they can't be great at everything. So they know their niche. When we went to Warren Buffett, I was with my mother. And we pitched him on the museum and getting involved. You know, he didn't get it. I mean, it was completely out of his lexicon. He didn't have a clue. It just did not relate. Could not understand the value. Didn't understand that you guys would have gone to the museum and spent time and money there and gone to the gift shop. And I, even though I had, could show him that we had done this in Vegas and made a lot of money doing it, he still could not see it. So we have to have our own instincts about this. You know, oh, it's like, absolutely. I'll tell you, my mother also had another really interesting instinct about land. She would, she, everything she ever bought real estate wise, you know, was always worth a gazillion dollars more. And she had great instincts for land. And that was something she... Now, unfortunately, we didn't get to hold... We lost a lot of this stuff in the husband mix. So you got to watch out for like, like sharing that with the bad marriages. But <laughs> what incurred... We, we would have been gazillionaires had we not lost a lot of this in marriages. We had a little trade-off there. But the, her instincts were flawless in certain categories. Not picking men, but picking real estate and other... And collectibles. I mean, she was into it. Uh, so I, I say that because you have to go on your own gut. Collect what turns you on, what makes you excited. Why did you collect action figures? Because you played with them or what caused you to go uh, into it? You know, I, I would say that I think it was, you know, I was a kid and I, it was the superpowers, heroes, um, you know, and Star Wars. Star Wars was one of the first movies I saw and it was the first bunch of action figures. I just opened a box the other day and found probably... 25 or 30, you know, I probably had 10 or 12 stormtroopers, which surprises me that my father would have paid for 10 of the same figures. That that blows my mind. Well, you I, obviously I can't imagine conned him. You conned him. There must have been some. I, I don't know what happened, but well, that's when how I saw that, that's the first we thing that went through my mind. We all negotiate with our parents and we use our super our superpowers to manipulate our parents. I figured out certain key words on how I could get my mother to 
do things that I wanted done or to buy me something. So it's important that children learn those skills early because it'll serve you well later in life. Right, Kat? And I think then, too, <laughs> what happened was as time went You're on, right I saw what these were worth. And um, I think in, it was starting in college. I just started grabbing things here and there and putting them in boxes. I didn't do anything with them, but I kept them in boxes. Well, that's good. And, um, I, th- I would think most kids get these and tear them open to play with them. It was a, it was a collecting that's thing. That's the problem. Yeah. So how many children do you find that have sort of this fastidious nature to, to believe that this needs to be kept in the box? Not many. So it's almost like the parents have to, to do that. If, if I were a parent, uh, which I'm over that, but if I were parenting, <laughs> I collected for my kids. You know, I would find things that I thought they should collect. You, you want to teach them certain things, and, and then you would perhaps hold things back for them. So investing for your kids, of course, is smart. You know, especially in things that you know later. I mean, let's face it. This stuff is better than gold. It's better than anything. I mean, it's, it's, this is crypto stuff. You know, you're talking about something that has a very limited amount of them. Then the demand is high for certain <laughs> ones. And therefore, it's like cryptocurrency. So, and, and when the S hits the fan like it's been doing, collectible markets are through the roof. Uh, my mother collected some beautiful paintings. The value of those paintings is off the charts. Every single month that stuff goes up in value, better than anything I could ever invest in in terms of the stock market or something in the conventional investments. So I believe a percentage of your net worth should be in collectibles. Like I believe a percentage should be in a real estate, in a house if you can do that or you need to be working towards that. But once you have the house, then you want to diversify. You don't want to just put everything in the bank. Look what's going on in Canada for crying out loud. They just decide to wipe these people out, go in and take their money out of their accounts like as if that's even fathomable. I mean, what is that? Uh, it makes me very concerned. If they could do it there, can they do it here? So if that's not safe, then what is? Well, this is in my house. You know, I've got things in my house. I just don't understand how they can freeze people's bank accounts. Well, they didn't freeze it. They took the money. No, the... Well, you've seen the freezing of bank accounts. Like when the IRS says you owe us X, whether you've even had a trial or not, they can freeze your accounts. Uh, same thing with the different state tax uh, organizations. They do have this power to freeze. There has to, there's very little due process. And, and that's completely against the Constitution of this country to not have full due process, especially in taxation, which is what the entire Revolutionary War was about. Uh, I mean, when we... I was going to read the Declaration of Independence, uh, and I, but I, I won't really do it but, uh, right now, but it re- it's time to reread that document right now. Why did we separate from England in the first place? Because the government had become overbearing and ty- tyrannical. Wow, does, does that sound familiar? I've heard that somewhere. And <laughs> what were they up to? What caused the Boston Tea Party? Was, you know, it was about overtaxation. And what are you getting for your taxation? Is the government representing you or are they overbearing? Are they overreaching? Um, and the purpose of government, and we left England so we wouldn't have all that junk. So, you know, I feel really bad for our brothers and sisters in Canada, you know, but they should come here at, for the time being. But we, it's a slippery slope. We're, we're on the same path if we're not careful. So I say that because we're talking about preserving your investments. What are your investments? Well, I... I, you know, if you buy collectibles, definitely that's a smart thing. I've never seen a collectible go down that I've... I mean, you could buy something lame, okay? I'm not saying... But if you buy something good, a collectible, I've never seen it go down in value. No. I, uh, this summer, I sold $1,000 worth of loose figures that my father Surplus. had kept. Yeah, he just found them in the attic. Uh, they were, you know, the Superman, the green, you know... Loose Green figures, you, you squeeze their legs and they, you know, they did different things. But they were loose and I thought, oh, I don't want these. So I went on eBay looking around. Some of them I sold for $130, $140, a loose figure. I didn't even know what it was, why I had it. Well, but, see, uh, now that wasn't your wheelhouse. It was and not. I, and I do like what you do. You know, you refine your focus. So that was what my mother did too. When she first started collecting, she had television. So we had Batman and Robin. We had the Flying Nun. We had a lot of television figures, Superman. And she eventually traded that for other movie stuff because you can't collect everything. You know, I mean, 
unless you're Warren Buffett. But I mean, you know, it's like Paul Allen was a good friend of Carrie's and, and he, he even had to focus in rock and roll memorabilia. You know, he, he didn't, well, he bought a lot of other stuff, but, but you know what I mean? Even these billionaires can't just collect everything. Where would you put it? David Copperfield's a great example. He, he focuses in on magic, everything to do with the history of magic, the origins of magic, the great, great stars of magic. And, uh, and, and that's his passion. And, and he has like everything, but he doesn't drift. You know, he's not like in left field off in 12 other collections. I have a question. Gregory Kulenjan says, what did Debbie think of seeing her daughter's likeness on all the figurines? So it's a great question because we never talked about this. And that's why I told the story a minute ago. The, the, the action figures and all of this stuff ends up in the garage in a box. And my mother rescues it. So she saw the importance. Even though Carrie wanted to give it away, she saw the importance and knew that at some point that was going to be relevant. And so my mother had an act about seeing things like I mean, you, you could just say it like this. My mother was really proud of Carrie uh, and, and the person that Carrie was. And, and the character that Carrie played in Star Wars was the character that my mother groomed in life. That strong woman that you see playing Leia is the person that my mother built and groomed and made into, molded, helped shape and mold. Obviously, Carrie was a free-willed creature and went off in left field, even rebelled against my mother. But there was a lot of work that went into Carrie that I watched. And my mother spent more time on Carrie than myself and, and just cre really created what you see. When, when Lucas saw Carrie in the, uh, the room where they were auditioning and, and she wrote, read those few lines, I'd recognize that foul stench anywhere. You know, I mean, like that attitude is what he wanted. He, that was the princess that we all now know and love. But that was already Carrie, and my mother had groomed Carrie into that type of person. Now, Carrie brings life to that character. You know, this like, that's why those characters were so revered and, and needed to be in that story ongoing. And that's why when they brought them back, the audience erupts in an emotional glee to see their favorite people back because they brought heart and soul to that franchise. Disney could ruin that thing if they're not careful. You know, you need those characters and that storyline. That is the magic of it all. I mean, if you start to get into wokeness and stuff, you'll trash that whole storyline. So there's, there's a, a magic that was created there by George and the characters and the people he brought in. The answer is Carrie was, uh, my mother was so proud of Carrie because of what she brought to that role. That's the ultimate thing you can do as an actor is to bring the, this life into this character that becomes a world famous character that inspires people in real life even though we're in a fantasy world. I mean, that's what Carrie did. And then in, in real life, as you know, Carrie was very outspoken about her mental illness and other things and that just made it even more interesting. She was just became more magical. The idea that she could create and become and inspire the way she did while under a mental illness. I mean, it, that's even more inspiring. My mother used to say she's better than Molly Brown because Molly Brown had no ailments. You know, she was without any sort of handicap. Carrie had a definite mental illness that she struggled with forever. But she, over, she lived her life to the fullest even with that going on. So, you know, my mother was super proud of Carrie. That's that long answer. <laughs> That's the long version of that question. My goodness. Okay, and uh, I'm, I don't know, I, I haven't the ability to go back now to see far enough to see I can get out of this where show. the auction items uh, well, are. Well, let's review. So Let, let's, uh, well, Todd we'll is coming back Give to the mothership. Give me that stuff, I'll review. And uh, Ryan, you're going to go on there and take a peek if you can. I am taking my... And I'm going to give away things because <laughs> I think it's that time. Well, I'll review. And someone said that I looked really comfortable because I'm sitting here in a pair of jeans and a shirt and my, my, I, I finally got a pedicure. Barefoot. <laughs> look how pretty. Oh, look, I my forgot about this. My feet look so, like, the, he said they look like eagle's feet when I went in there. Now look at them. They're we just forgot as to dainty this. as it gets. What is that? If you remember. Oh, that's going on the page, right? Yeah, if, if you remember a few months ago, um, we 
put one or one of these up. Yeah. And so I had a couple of more made. Uh, these are the film cells that I found in Carrie's drawer. And uh, let me see if I can do this. Oh, that's a pretty good, if you put it against your shirt, you can see it pretty well because it's white. Well, here, right, let me come up here. <laughs> Follow the bouncing ball. Oh, we're on the center camera, are we? Oh. No, wait, 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 wait. I just, here's, there it is. Wait. In yep. There it is. Now, you see Carrie there? So there's Carrie. Uh, we got these really beautiful magnetic plexiglass displays. That's a frame of actual footage from the movie, from a print of Star Wars, a 35 millimeter image. And we had these little uh, laser plaques made to go with it. And last time I made one of these, I only made one, and then there was a bunch of people that wanted them, and I didn't have any more. So I gave Ryan, I believe, three of these. I gave you three. At least. There's three. Is that three? I think there's three. And they're all different. So there it is. So we're going to put those up tomorrow, right? Uh, we'll start. We can, we can let those we'll trickle those. Okay, so these are going to start surfacing on the website. I just wanted you to see that. And, and so a little reminder of, the, of what we're doing still. We have the MGM book of my mother's with her notes, handwritten notes. We have her name in it. We have an authentication with it. Am I correct that the, was the last bid I saw like 15 minutes ago? Yeah, it, the last bid I saw was Barb Kevern at 600. But if, if someone made a bid after that, can you let me know? Because I can't go back in the feed that... As well as the carry item, so which it's the, uh, I think that it's was It's the 400. Debbie MGM book, and then this picture. Signed. I love that picture. Signed. A yeah. cute picture, and it's in the plastic uh, it's, collectible it, uh, archive plastic, and it's graded. We also have the stationery in the envelope of the museum with the early Oh, members. that's great. This has got all the early people, Jack Haley Jr. Oh, yeah. And cool people in there. Uh, and then, of course, and you she have... she had notes in the book, right? Yeah, so I can show that. Yeah. Um, you could see... John, hit that one. So you see those sticky notes have her handwriting on it. And so there's a few pages where there's notations that go with that. So and it's in mint condition. This book is in 90% perfect shape. That, it is a heavy piece. Oh, that's the second great. item is the carry bundle, which is the action figure... Um, that's about 20 some odd years old. The, what I call a one-off picture. It's just a, a print, obviously, of Carrie, but it's a unique but picture nonetheless. It is, it, 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 and it's a beautiful picture. And then these two collectible cards, of which, if you'd switch, to, switch over to uh, Apple TV for a second. Oh, John's not even here, I'll do it. <laughs> so if you look here, there's the, the card on eBay. I'm not saying it's worth that, that may be some you know, that's what people are obviously trying to get. Uh, but anyway, there is, uh, there is that card uh, in that bundle as well, plus this other card, which is Carrie laying down. I haven't even looked that one up yet. So you got an interesting possible value in these. They're in pretty decent shape. The, the action figure's in mint condition. That's the Carrie bundle for tonight. And then as, as we mentioned earlier, we're going to uh, be putting up the Carrie book, her writing book, and some of her handwritten notes. More action figures are going to go up tomorrow. Uh, we'll find some Debbie stuff as well. So tomorrow on the Studio Store site, there should be some real fun things. Hi, Kylie Catlett. Could, could we have anyone who made a bid to reaffirm that in the chat? I think what I'm seeing is Gina Selman, 425 for Carrie, and Barb Kevern, 600 for Debbie. But yeah, if we, could we just get, need those confirmed. By yeah, the we were a little busy them. tonight. Yeah, it was a fun show. Everybody well, enjoyed mean, your, your your show and tell, which I think is great. Well, we're going to try to come up with different versions of this for the next few weeks. You know, I mean, I have different categories uh, that we will go through. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, we're also tomorrow going to put back up this. See if I can not hurt myself here. You remember this thing. So this set. This is an example of what people. This is what we did with our, with our envelopes that have the matching stamps on them. Zoom so in on that, John. That's, zoom a, way that's in. what we did with ours. 
So if you buy the envelopes collection like that, this is an incredible way to present them. Well, I think this I is think something Barb I'd want to buy. Barb, Barb did the same thing. I remember seeing a picture of hers, and it was beautiful. I'd want to buy this, you know, put this for my kids, because you'll. this is 2007 release of postage stamps and envelopes. I've, I've never seen this many. I have looked on eBay. You will not see this many. No. So we're going to post a couple of sets of those tomorrow as well. Yep. And other items like that. Uh, so... Hoping to give you guys some fun stuff. Uh, and I, I continue to find things. So that brings me to like, as I'm going to go over these shows, and we do, let's say I do a show on still pictures. I'm going to talk about different kinds of still pictures to collect, how you can tell if it's a, a reprint or an original print and studio prints. And, you know, we could have a, a whole, you know, 30 minute show, hour show on that. Uh, then you start to get into costumes. We'd probably do shoes and costumes. Uh, we will probably do um, programs, posters. Do you have claim sales going on tomorrow? That's what we're calling. We're going to have both auction we're, so and claim. So they're going to have both because people were a little confused. But I think that that's a great idea: a claim sale both. and an auction. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, keep your eyes peeled over there. What does that mean, keep your eyes peeled? I mean, I know we well, say it, but you, what it the heck does that mean? Peeled means keep your eyelids open. Oh, okay. So uh, keep your eyes peeled over there for the, uh, did, did you hear from anybody? Okay, good. All right, so um, is this blocking your camera at all? Well, it, it will block the close-up camera for sure. Yeah, I'll because put this we down need here. your pretty face to be seen. No, we it's not blocking me. I thought it meant for your giveaways. Oh, no, oh, for giveaways. Aren't you all doing right, giveaways? All right, so um, Ryan, we're going to do giveaways. Now, first of all, I didn't see you with my book in, in the giveaway pile. Is there some reason I've been cut from the giveaway I, honestly, list. I was collecting giveaway items so fast. Yeah, but I, 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 I have a standing uh, deal that well I put up Well, then we one shall one. give one away. But, I mean, you know what I'm saying. I feel I slighted. Do. And, I do, I do, know, I do. I feel, you know. Just g g f getting you tied down no, to, I to sign them is the, is yeah, the thing. Yeah, it's not that hard. Eventually they get signed. I, I grab him by the ankles and I bite him and I say, come on, sign this now. I get to them within a few days. You and do. They, they're not that is true. I don't obviously sit around waiting <laughs> endlessly for that. <laughs> exactly. No, okay. but I, I, like to, I like to personalize them to people. I, th hey, I like hey, to have hey. that. What happened? I love you. When you're sleeping. That's what happened. I just wanted to confess and profess my love for you, Todd Fisher. Oh. I did. I felt like I had to, wanted get to, Get it out there. To. You thought anybody, get it out in there. case anybody doubted? You know what? I'm sure there's a couple people out there that have a little crush on you, because I, I know what that feels I've like. I've got so a I crush on you, I've got a crush pie. on you. <laughs> All right. So let's give stuff away. Randomizer, shall we? Do you have that? Yes, it's in front oh, of... He doesn't have it. Yeah. We could do some random trivia. Or I have, or, yeah, you could do some random. Or I have a, a number randomizer I can just type it into. Or just I don't know how you pick a number, though. Just no. say a number? Oh, this is good. One and what? 60. Okay. Um, 33. 33. Belinda Fawn. Belinda Fawn, you are a wiener. Let's give so her this some... Is we have, have cat, any, uh, we have Catfisher, the live randomizer, in action. <laughs> exactly. Hold on one she second. She just randomly thinks of a number. Oh, yes. I'm going from back to front. Oh, by the way, I just want to make an announcement that today... All the cream went out. 300 jars of Elastin Collagen Cream went out. Yesterday and today. 300. 300. And I sent somebody a note saying, I'm sending you the travel size. I sent someone a note today that said, I'm sending you the travel size because we didn't get our entire shipment in. And then it came in. So I was like, thank you, God. Uh, did another box arrive? No, but the ones you found helped me get Yeah, it didn't all get, of them it's out. still not the whole 
order, though. No, gosh, no. You know, I mean, b- the jar situation I, I told is you, ridiculous. I think, I it's think ri- if we made a and trip. And by the way, the jar this time is bigger and has more product in it. It's a beautiful, it's beautiful. But it's just so frustrating. I think if everybody, um, if everybody were to write Joe Biden and ask to release the the collagen cream from Long Beach. No, it's jars. Right, but the jar, oh, well. Oh, the, the product the, is, but the product the is, product's on a ship in Long Beach. No, we no, need to the get jars. That. Okay, the jars you are on a ship. You can't believe it or not. You can't get jars. We need to write the White House and say, get our collagen cream <laughs> jars released <laughs> from the Long Beach Harbor immediately. But I'm just really happy because everyone's been so patiently waiting for this. You can't go to the me. dollar store and get some other I kind of jars. I don't even have a jar. I, but anyway, all this is to say is that Belinda, Belinda Vaughn, F A U G H N, right? <laughs> Who's better than you are? All right, Belinda, you have won a jar of elastin collagen cream. The rarest item on <laughs> earth. <laughs> yeah, Cat Cosmetics donated the Only rarest gasoline item on earth. gasoline is more earth. rare. Look how big it is. It's, it's bigger. It's slightly bigger. It's 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 beautiful. And if you've not ever used this, you wouldn't understand. And if you have used it, there, there's just no explaining it. You, it's it's like crack cosmetics. You yeah, can't but if you, get if, off if you it. had it's that, so good. if you went into uh, Neiman Marcus and bought a brand name this? product in oh, that, it'd be, be two hundred oh, bucks. Oh yeah, right. But it's not. No, but it would. But, but you, it would if it was if it was with a, some name yeah. on it. Well, we have the same. We use the same factory. Yeah, but it's they they package it and you pay yeah. for the name like but, whatever. Oh, this is amazing, Belinda! Congratulations, congratulations! That is that made me really happy to be able to do that. Now wait a minute, wait just a cotton picking minute. There'll be another one given away next Friday because somebody donated one today. So next Friday, do you I'll actually be have them though? Yes, okay. I will. Yes. Oh, confidence. I'll tell you what I do have. I think uh, as of this moment, we're probably sold out. But in, by the end of this week, I'm hoping to get do the I need rest to, of do my... Do I need to go ahead with that email to Joe? To, <laughs> to get the jars released? He i got to get a priority. He's not going to get the jars released. Yes, he's got clout. He, Don't you know he's got everything he's under control? Not, he can't get everything the jars released. Everything is under control. He's only the president. He does. He can't get can't the get jars. jars. Can't get jars. Well, he <laughs> That's took right. care of that lady's dog on the porch. He said. I think so. Oh God, here we go. All right, let me give you another number right now. Fifty-one. Who dat? Fifty-one. Yes. Ginger Angel, we have new names tonight. Ginger Angel, Ginger, how I love you. Ginger Angel, how I love you. Sounds like a thing from how Greece. How I tingle when he passes by. Every time he says hello, my heart begins to fly. Is that Greece? No. Johnny Angel is just a great song from the 60s. No, but it was in some movie, too. Oh, wasn't well, it? I mean, everything's been in a movie. Oh, oh, oh. I'm sorry, who was the winner of number 51? Ginger? Ginger Angel. Ginger Angel, you have won one of the new makeup bags. It's a zipper bag, and it is made out of a very soft burlap, and it says, Faith It Till You Make It. Let me see that one second. I don't see believe that? burlap's the right term. Let me, let me. It is. It's a very soft burlap, and no. it has a beautiful zipper, and it's big, and it will hold anything you want to hold in it. And burlap. you can even use it as a little purse if you want to, because it has a strap uh, on the inside. So, Ginger Angel. By the way, anybody that wins a prize, please claim your That's prize. That's just coarse linen. That's not burlap. Okay, co- it's coarse not. It's linen. linen, but it's not coarse. Yeah, it's it's a it's coarse we- it's a coarse weave though. Oh, a coarse That's weave. That's why you're. Co- it's See, not burlap. I, burlap very... makes you think it's a pot- sack of potatoes or something. Okay, so linen. That's right. <laughs> a linen bag. A linen bag. Faith it till you make it. Uh, this is uh, one of our. Uh, uh, Linda Kornreich came up with that one for me. I love you, Linda. So that that was great. So Ginger Angel, please, uh, and anyone else who wins tonight, go ahead and uh, claim your prize by writing me at info at catcosmetics.com. Let me know that you are claiming your prize and leave me your address. That way I can send it to you. Okay. Now it's my book. Number three. Is it Todd Fisher? It's going to be Todd Fisher's book, signed by Todd Fisher. My Girls. His Girls. My Girls. Yes, and an excellent book it is. 
All right, I'm going to give you another number. 72. It's outside of the range. That's right, up to 60. Um, uh, 15. Rochelle Ness. Rochelle, if you have, if you, uh, you're new uh, for us, so you will write me at info at catcosmetics.com and claim your prize. And, and give then me you your tell address. me how you want it autographed. And you say how you want it autographed. Do you want it, the book, Todd's book, My Girls, autographed to you or to someone else? And Rochelle, since I don't know if you know anything about it, I wrote this book about Carrie and Debbie. So it's a, it's a, a book about our lives together growing up and all of that. And right. it's sort of front to back coverage and behind the scenes coverage. And um, I think you'll really like it. And I'm happy to sign it for you or to your mother or whoever. And uh, also um, make sure, Rochelle, that you claim it because any prizes that aren't claimed will go back into next week's uh, prizes. So we have to get that from, from you guys. All right, going back in, number 27. Angela Basir. Angela Basir. Angela Basir has been with us for since day one on has this. Has she ever won anything? Yes, she has won something, actually, Angela. Hold on one second. Angela, Bish Bish here it is. Okay, Angela, you have won. It's called Rich 2.0. It is a lip crayon. I actually have it on tonight. Um, and it looks good on everybody. It is so beautiful. This, this is from Cat Cosmetics. And it is self-sharpening. You just roll it up from the bottom. It's a luxury lip crayon, and I wish I could show you the color better, but you can just see it because it's on my lips. There you go, so you can see it there. And congratulations, Angela Basir. All right. Huh? Rich 2.0 luxury lip crayon is... Lip crayon. It's, it is a lip, lip crayon. Oh, it is. It's, it's no, I meant he's just trying way. to make a note. Okay, great. Okay. <laughs> you know he is because Ryan feels my pain. When I have to send these, when we send these things out, we're like, oh my God, who won? So that's a very important gig right there. Uh, Cheryl Canning, 450 for Nikki on Carrie Bundle. It's actually at 500. Okay, so that's up to 500. All right, uh, number 29. Who dat? Gina Glass. Gina Glass? Oh my goodness, Gina Glass. You have won. Let me see what you have won. Ah, Gina, you have won no baggage, no baggage. You have won no baggage. All right. Now. Yes, I love this. This is from Cat Cosmetics, no baggage. It is absolutely amazing. It is not makeup. It's actually a treatment. You can wear it over makeup, under makeup, alone. You just take it out. It looks like a lip gloss wand. You put a little bit under your eyes. And voila. And voila. Your bags and circles are on a trip. They are getting brightened and tightened underneath now, the eye area. If you it's remember awesome. earlier, Gina Glass, make sure you write me at info at catcosmetics.com. Claim your prize. All right. Earlier, when I was at the collectible table, I was talking about how beautiful the sideshow carry yes. thing was. And I was saying, you know, sometimes it's really hard to get that where it looks good. I'm now going to show you an example of what. I was talking about and what I don't like and how I, it's like, I mean, no, I, I don't even, I guess I shouldn't even say no slide on this, but this is a, a great example of my worst nightmare of a, a, a version of Carrie. Okay. Here we go. Now, seriously? Who did that? I'm, that's, so I don't even know what it is. I don't care. I'm just saying that has to be destroyed and removed from the market immediately. It is the most unattractive, worst possible drawing of Carrie ever she, it is it horrific looks like it's look it, you know when they do that thing where they someone's been missing for 50 years and they do what they would look like you know if oh, they were it's 90. worse than, <laughs> those are way better than that, no, that that's but this is my, unbelievable this is my point I have lots of things come to me like that and you and you don't want to be you know rude but on the other hand you need to shut that stuff down i mean i remember i had this one person doing some sculpting of carrie he was trying to get he could not get it right no matter what 
And I, and you know, at a certain point, you you feel like you're being rude, but but <laughs> the reality. Shannon, is, what the what? <laughs> yes, it is. I know. It's like, come on. I mean, it's it's it just it does no justice to who she is on any level. And and <laughs> and as her brother, I'm like offended by that stuff. And I guess it's just my place that I can go ahead and be rude about it. And uh, it, it's like my mother too. I have some drawings of my mother that are like, what? I mean, this is a beautiful woman. You know, and that you've managed to, to, I don't know what, draw. And so having said that, 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 that's the thing about art, you know, is when you're drawing a person, you can really wreck it. Segway back to Sideshow, they just kill it. And there are lots of good carry pieces on the Sideshow website. Yeah. I mean, really good stuff. I hope that person does not get one penny for that terrible... <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's just awful. I to, I'm Let not, me you just know, I, tell you that Carrie did not have jowls like that. That was just... And, well, and, I don't know what the, that I, is. Did you notice that she had eyeliner on one eye and not on the other? She I would did, flip I, out I, if I just, she saw I'm that. Just, it's like... It's, it, well, they're asking that. To me, it's 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 you have to pay $1,000 uh, as a fine for having that. That should be a fine. Pay everybody who looked at it a thousand dollars. Exactly. Okay. So you so all get a thousand dollars. We all need to write that person tonight <laughs> and ask for a thousand dollars for everybody that had to look at endure the look on that picture. Fair enough. Uh, yeah. Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> and Kylie says it's got to go. Shannon Johnson. It's one thing if someone wants to draw, but entirely different. They try and sell it. Yikes on bikes. Well, it's 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 yeah. It's it's really bad. <laughs> Donna Whit Witter Whitwer. It says, looks like Golda Meir. <laughs> ah. Well, I mean, look, some things are cartoony on purpose. A cross between uh, Angela Lansbury and Carrie, Angela Pritchett says. Oh, dear. Oh. Well, I mean, here, like, bring up Apple TV for one second. So, so here's, a whole, here's a whole bunch of Carrie images, you know, and, and please explain how any of these resemble, even the cartoon. Now, that's horrific, too. So there's a, there's a cartoony thing that's supposed to be Carrie. How does that look like Carrie? I mean, that looks like Madge, uh, you know, uh, the, on the, on the, uh, to some television show. You know, that's, who is that? I mean, I don't know who that is. But, you know, like, you don't expect much out of these, these little action figures. I just sent you the picture look, of the thing you're talking about that was done. You sent it to, what do you mean? I don't have my phone Let's with give me. something else away while you look Go at ahead. that. Okay. But okay. some stuff is cool. You know, I mean, I'm not saying it's... Number, because uh, we could be here all night. <laughs> I mean, we could be here all night. We're but people have to go to bed, I think. Okay. It's a weekend. Uh, I know. Now, look um, at that. John, bring this one up. Uh, 48. John, oh, my gosh. I mean, tell me that that should also be removed immediately. I think it's... Is that supposed to be in the Darth Vader helmet? I don't know. It's pretty rough. I mean, it's creative in one sense, but just not anything like Carrie. Who, who's the wiener? Agnes Rennie. Agnes Rennie? Agnes Rennie? Agnes, are you out any, there? Any relation to Michael Rennie? Agnes, if you are out there, you have won. Here we go. You have won a $25 gift certificate to catcosmetics.com, Agnes. I need you to write me at info at catcosmetics.com and claim this gift certificate it's from cat cosmetics and i will and make sure i have your email address so i can send you the code for that okay all right agnes rennie you were the wiener now let's do another one and uh, then let's close the auctions okay so you have auction numbers may i just say what they are before i do this Nikki Grandchamp, you have the mic 500 right there. for Carrie. Yes. Just, 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 he's going he's gonna to say it. Nikki Grandchamp is at $500 for the Carrie bucket. Uh, okay. And Barbara Kemmer is at $600 for the... Oh, turn on the light, Ryan. Okay. Oh. She have a green light. Okay, so... Okay, that's okay. Nikki Grandchamp is in the lead role at 500 and Barb Kemmer in the lead role at 600 for Debbie's. And we are going to end this auction right after this win okay so this is number seven right so at the end of this prize the auction will close all right so um let's see 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 uh let's see um nine um under 60 uh, uh 29. You just said 29. i did 
Now you see how that works? My brain latched on to one number twice. What does it mean? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> uh, you got it back, John? 30. Oh, I haven't? Okay. Six. Well, I'm going to put the batteries upside down. Paula Mickle. Paula Mickle. Paula Mickle. Oh, Paula. I love you, Paula. You have one from donated by Barbara Hammond. You have one. Thank you, Barbara, for donating this. One, it's such two. a great gift. Paula, you have one. This is You're called hot. Naturally Sunkissed. This is the most amazing bronzer. I use it all over my face sometimes. <laughs> I mean, instead of makeup, I just... And you get a wonder puff with it. So what I would do if I were you is I would take a blush brush and I would really lightly, because it's a very... This is a really high-end bronzer. So you want to take a little brush, put it all over your face, look like a goddess. And then you take the Wonder Puff, which is awesome, and you don't have to put anything on that, and you just buff it into your skin, and it looks like you have the best tan ever. This is an amazing gift. Thank you, Barbara Hammond. Paula Mickle, you are the wiener of... Barbara's uh, generosity, and thank you so much for being a part of our show. Bar uh, Paula's been here since the beginning, as Barbara has as well, so I love you guys. All right, we are closing the auction right now, and when we're going to give away one more prize, but let's announce the winners. Uh, Nikki Grandchamp, $500 for the carry bundle. Nikki Barb Grandchamp, Tavern. you have won the carry bundle, and I know you really wanted it, so congratulations. And, and Barb Kevern, $600 for Kevern the Debbie. at $600. You have won the MGM book with Debbie's notes and all the things that come with that. And I'm really happy for both of you, so congratulations, you guys. And I will reach out to them uh, in Messenger, but Barb, I know, is a quick payer, so she needs to wait because I'll have a new um, PayPal. Oh, you let this one go. We'll, we'll you get sure? That. Yeah. We'll okay. Get, we'll get so, right. Barb and Nikki, I'll be in touch with okay, you about so uh, shipping Ryan will be in touch with you on how to pay. We'll start it, like, as soon as it's practical. And um, the other thing is that Barb Kevern was here for Get Your Fire Back. And we had a ball. And I think it was, the, like, the most fun she's ever had in her life. That's what she said. And it made me feel good. All the girls, it was so awesome. I'm still, I sit in here now and I see your faces out there. It's, you, you know, everyone that's been to get your fire back, I'm very. They've been um, in this very room. They've been in this very room, and we all had a great time together, and every one of them. And we and have another one coming up. Yeah, I was going to say, don't March you have one coming? March 25th is the dinner cocktail party and my show. The 26th, March 26th and 27th are the actual seminar days. And we have five spots left in that seminar. That's it. So if you want more information, just go to catcosmetics.com and take a look at, at uh, what it is and see if it's something that you think that you would love. I guarantee you will. It's quite in a Vegas, thing. baby. In Vegas, baby. Let's give away one more thing. How about number 13? Lucky 13, Ryan. Maria, Maria, Karanikis, Karanikis. Oh, she's a Greek girl. Karanikis. Hold on a second. Ah, uh, Shannon, I can't wait either. Okay, uh, sh I'm sorry, Maria. Maria Karanikis. I just met a girl named Maria. Maria. Hey, John Sheets, what a great magician. I love you, John. Um, okay, so here we go. Um, Maria, I can't just, uh, I want to get her last name right. Would you say it again? Sometimes those. Karan, Karan, K A R A N. Karan. I K A S. Karanicus. Karanicus. All right. I, I did there my best. Is. You hear? She's there. Yay! Uh, so go ahead and write me at info at catcosmetics.com. All right. And make sure I have your address so I can send you because, again, Barbara Hammond did uh, also donate this, which I love. This is the mascara. It, this is uh, like having false eyelashes. But that's like the, the part of the essentials it's, package. It's mascara, and it's called Intense Lash. But isn't that part of like an essentials package? 
of things you would want you well, have to have? Well, uh, you know what? Not everybody likes to wear as much makeup as I do. But a lot of people do. But there's certain things you have to have. You just have to have it in your arsenal. It's, you know, your beauty arsenal. Got to have it in the old... Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's what you've got to have. You have to have a great bronzer. You have to have a great mascara. You have to have a great lip color. You have to have a great eye pencil. And you have to have a couple of good brushes. And With some bronzer and rouge. Yeah. What's that kit that you make that has the six little things in it? Oh, gosh, so. I make a lot of kits. Well, it's the one that has the rouge, the bronzers, and well, the eyeshadows. Well, the miracle working kit is the quintessential. So, like, uh, like uh, in, you know, I, obviously this is not my forte, but in my mind... I do like toolboxes, you know, guys like toolboxes. Yes. So you want to have the right tool for the right job. But to me, that, that kit, the one that has the six. <laughs> the right tool for the right job. It's a very, very. It's the same thing with makeup. That's right. If it's an essential. If you don't have good skin, like just, and how you get good skin is taking care of your skin. But even if you have good skin, you, you still. I mean, you can, it's never too late to get good skin. These days, everybody's locked up inside. So the bronzer is like an essential. A little bit of rouge is essential. A little bit of eyeshadow is essential. An eye pencil. Well, the way that you, you I don't know what happened to the thing you used to make that, that had the two ends on it. That eye thing, the smoky eye. Oh, the, the smolder. Now that freaking thing The was only awesome. thing that I'm going to be able to replace on that and that's why I'm going to L.A. in a couple of days because I'm going to the makeup show because I'm meeting the company. There's a pencil company from Germany. Who, the Germans make the most beautiful eye pencils in the world. Anybody who's anybody from the top, top brands, uh, you know, they get their pencils made in Germany because they're so unbelievably beautiful. Can you beautiful. explain why that is so? They're, it's just it, w because they've been making them for is a couple of years. Is it because of their lack years. of sense of humor? They probably made Cleopatra's eye pencils. Ah, well, that wouldn't be Germany, though. Those were Egyptians. Okay, well, <laughs> they came from Germany, okay? They came over. No um, matter when. They came they up the Nile. They sent camels to get them, Came across and they the got Mediterranean them. and up the Nile. Yeah, so I'm... I'm, I'm and they got, they got your MyPillow when they came up the Nile. The Gaza sheets, Gaza sheets, whatever they're called. Giza. Giza sheets. <laughs> Giza cotton. <laughs> I see that ad so many times a night. But you know what? I have to tell you. Before we go, I'll just tell you. I've been having really bad back pain, really bad lower back pain. I don't know why, but it's horrible. So we're watching the news, and we saw this ad for pain relief factor. Well, it's Pat called. Boone is a buddy of ours. And, and Pat Boone was... You know, playing the, tennis and running around playing golf, and then he runs up to the camera and he says, and "Hey, this is a happening thing." Yeah, and I said, "Todd, I'm going to try that because I'm I can't take it. I now can't. Let's, let's I don't want to take drugs for Let's a, also for remember that Pat is probably twenty something years older than us. Something. He's 20, yeah. 25 years older. Right. So the fact that he's running around playing tennis. And golf. And golf and all. So the rest, we there, we're like, you what? can you can do this. By the way, I know Pat too. And one thing about Pat. He would never do he would commercials never, for the money. Right. Yeah. He's not about that. He's really a straight shooter. And he's a super nice guy. Like one of the nicest guys ever. And he's really got an incredible personality. We love him to pieces. He's been really good to us. He's yes. great friends with my mom. They made Good by Charlie together. I love that But movie. we became lifelong friends. I'm friends with, I, I used to, you know, when his girls were growing up, we all used to hang out together as little kids. So we were all good friends. I love Pat. And so he would just never BS about a product, which is the only reason I even listen to the ad. Well, the thing is, is that I said, honey, can you get me that? Because I really want to try it. It's, there's no drugs. It's all natural. And I thought, I've tried everything, but I, I won't take drugs for pain. I just won't do it. I can't, first of all, because I'm allergic to everything. Slippery slope. It's a slippery slope. So he got it for me, and it was called a fast track or something like that. And you get two weeks where you have to take three packets a day. It's like vitamin. They look like vitamins. Well, I did it, and oh, my gosh, it works. I mean, there's days are still pretty rough. But for the most part, I couldn't even get out of bed or bend over to pick something up. It was so, my lower back was hurting so much. So I have to say, the pain relief factor is a really It's just called relief factor. Relief factor. Right. Okay. But by the way, the, it's not just, there is. And it, I, I thought the price on it was really good too. Part of the medication and it is sort of a pain relief medication. The other part. No, it's all natural. Is, yeah. No, I know that. But what I mean is it's, it's a compound meant for that. But 
there's part of it is also just sort of like a, a joint, you know, medication, what do yeah. you want to call it, vitamin, whatever you want to call it, mineral supplement. And that, so it's not just about the pain, it's also about, uh, re, you know, addressing arthritis and, you know, osteoporosis. Well, you know, all I can say is that if you can take the, the bite off of pain, because a lot of people are in constant pain about one thing or another, and if you can just take the bite out of that pain, it, it, the, it takes the edge off. This stuff works. I was really happy with it. I've and actually been You know what else I really like that I got off of those commercials? The balance of nature, because I don't yes. eat enough vegetables or well, fruit. Well, that's a no-brainer, because there's and no way. And I swear, I feel so much better from that stuff. So, you know, we keep seeing, and, and the my pillow guy, I bought his towels, because they were like $29 for a whole set. They're so good. They're the best towels I've ever had. So those are the three commercials <laughs> you see constantly when you're watching the news. And I'm here to tell you that if I buy something and I get burnt, I don't mind saying that. You oh, know? yeah. Well, you because if it. you spend a dollar and you're not happy, you got burnt. It's too much. It's a dollar too much. So anyway, I, 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 get, I have no that's, affiliation that's your, to any uh, of these is companies. That, is that the commercial uh, side of the show here tonight? We've... No, well, I, I actually, know, as I, you know, I, I don't I have bought, anything in stake. I'm I just bought saying. enough Relief Factor also. I signed me up too, and, and I did notice a difference. I, I'm such a wreck, though. I keep falling off of high places and things, so I don't, think, it, I don't think it's covered in that. He bought, Diane Vote bought the towels too. Aren't they great? You know what I love? They just take all the water off of you really fast, and they're soft, and I'm I, into I love soft. them. Oh, as Erica Escamilla, I bought his towels too. Debbie Rouse, constant pain makes you miserable. Boy, is that the truth. Um, I don't think there's anything worse than, like, toothache pain. Uh, that, that's really bad. Uh, will it help herniated discs as well? You know, I don't know, but mine, mine is so bad. It took a couple of weeks for it to take effect. Yeah. And then it, it Also, did I want to say before we go tonight, too, that... Um, yeah, where's Frucho? Franco. <laughs> Deb Tyler. Well, now I'm going to have to get all three. I've been wondering about the towels and balance of nature. <laughs> if you had to pick between balance of nature. Uh, it, it depends if you're in pain or not. Yeah. If, but the balance of nature is just. If you can afford it, so you should do both. You, yeah. I just, what I try to do it's so is good. I try to just supplement my meals with that because yeah. I, I know that if we I'm. We don't need enough. No, but that. if we have a, like tonight, we're going to have pasta and chicken. And, and so there's, I didn't see any vegetables to be seen anywhere in the uh, neighborhood. So balance the nature. We get out the green bottle, three pills, bam, you get all your greens. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. It reminds me a lot of when I was a kid watching these science fiction uh, films, and they'd be up in outer space squeezing out tubes of goo for their meals. I mean, that's kind of what we've arrived, and gladly so. Yeah. So um, I will, Barb Cavern, she says, say hi to Buck, too. I certainly will. But I wanted to, uh, Gina, uh, I wanted to, you know, address you because you were saying that you lost a pet this week and how hard that is. Um, also, there, you asked for, for us to put you on our prayer list, which I most definitely w am going to do that. But I just want to tell you th about the, the pet because I know um, how hard that is when you have as many pets as we have, we're always, it seems like we don't go very long without losing somebody because they're at different ages and, you know, and all that. We had a rough week too, Gina. We lost two chickens this week and that was hard. And then um, our cat almost died this week, but they saved him. Just, he came home today and we're just amazed because he was so, he was in deep kidney failure and he's only four, four. Not four. He's he's three or four. Three, maybe. Yeah. But he's anyway, young. we love Jag. And so when he came home today, I was, whew. but, you know, losing a pet, Gina, is terrible. It's, it's as bad as losing a person because our pets love us unconditionally, unlike most people's ability. You know what I mean? Pets just do. And, and so they're always there for us and they wag their tails when we get home. And, you know, they, they love on us all the time and we can do no wrong in our pet's eyes, so no wonder we love them so much. And I'll say the same thing to you. I always say to everybody, and I have to do myself to keep from going under, it, and that's um, that you make a promise when you get a pet. We make a promise to love them, feed them, house them, care for them in every way, and uh, and we keep the promise, and I'm sure that you kept the promise for your pet and so I'd like you to focus on the fact that you kept your promise 
which many people don't, and many people do. So, you know, the thing about it is that you can feel good about that. You, of course you're going to miss your pet. Of course you are. And I saw people saying that you'll see your pets again, and I do believe that too. I so love that book, is it All Pets Go to Heaven? All Pets Go to Heaven, yeah. And I, I believe that. I think that the innocence, it's, it's like the innocence of children. You yeah. know, the, they, they, they go to heaven no matter what. They don't have a time to... To, to rack up any negative points. <laughs> and uh, and exactly. I feel that way about pets, too. So you make know? sure you're going to heaven so you can see your pets. That's true. And um, I, but anyway, Gina, you're on my heart because I did see your post. So I just want to say focus on the fact for a bit what a great uh, parent you were that kept the promise because that's really the, the biggest, most important thing. And, um, and then the rest will work itself out. Um, uh, and uh, so, uh, I just want to say before we say good night. Um, let's see, ooh, a lot, a lot of people. Uh, yep, Debbie Lewis. Animals are the absolute best. Um, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, losing two chickens was terrible. Back to back, three days apart. It was very hard on me. Um, so, uh, Julie Lawrence and Sharon Am Amorosa. Uh, Sharon's saying she didn't like that pillow, but Sharon, guess what? I don't either, by the way. But you want to know something? It's because I bought it at Walmart, all right? When you buy the pillow on the website, you get the fill that you want. When you buy it at Walmart, you get, you get the fill, standard that, fill, and that fill was just too much. Well, you let me sleep on that one, and I, it was no, like, no, it was I had like this. I yeah, that's great pillow I got there in the morning. <laughs> but I, I just there. ordered a, sm a a light fill. But what pillows do I like? What do I call you them? Mushies. You like mushies. mushy pillows that you can put well, under my your... My head then is straight. You your know. mom liked mushies. She's the one who and now trained me to grow up to want and appreciate a mushy pillow. Right. What is the definition of a good mushy pillow? It needs to be... Well, I don't know about this. It's da I don't First of all, your mushy is f down Our, our goose down. Yeah. Very high end pillows and they cost big money yeah so if in fact that pillow worked for the kind of money he also would be a miracle because well the pillows I'm, I buy I'm getting are crazy a, a thin filled one because everybody that has like Tippy Hedren lived by her my pillow you you brought it with oh, you he's traveling with his my yeah. pillow. So I've heard a lot of people go swear by but I, the one you bought I was like no, what I, is this I bought it at Walmart and shame on everybody for kicking him out of their stores because that's just terrible. That's so un-American and so horrific. And he's such a great guy. And, you know, so, so please just support just the Just because you man. don't agree with him doesn't yeah. mean you need to I cancel think him. He, and his company is amazing, and it's in Minnesota, and he it, everything is made in the USA, and he supports a lot of and people. And isn't that what this is... And there is isn't what, that what that's this what is it's all, all about. about. Yes. Made in the USA. You Same know, we, with my We stuff. are all Americans regardless of political points of views, and we as Americans should tolerate all points of view that we always have historically throughout our history. Um, and we, we, vo we voice our differences, and we can talk them through, but we don't go to war over them or shouldn't. And, and we usually are able to move along and all get along. That was my favorite thing okay. that Jack Nicholson does in this movie when the aliens attack. Can't we all just get along and he delivers that line so beautifully that it it, it transcends but the you real know whose truth. line originally that was rodney king okay there he, you go. he was saying he did not want people rioting over his yeah. situation as bad as it was and so he was said he said can't we all just get along and is and that by the way the answer thing? is of course yes, we, can. we can we have for generations yes and what happens is you get into all this electronic bs and you get into all of these things and it stirs the pot and we get caught up in that. And the reality is that we as Americans are the most loving and caring and get along kind of group that there ever was in the history of the earth. And we need to make sure we keep that going because that is what USA is all about. Right. So uh, so people are talking, of, you know, so if you go to the my pillow. Um, just get a really thin fill because then you can like put it under your neck any way you like it. It's now it's I, I have to agree. By the way, a thousand percent on those those, those uh, towels. The towels fantastic. are unbelievable. Uh, I thought th then the price is amazing. Yes. Considering I have paid 
crazy premium towels. That, remember those ones I bought? Oh, was, my gosh. We paid $200 for and those they were, towels. They were so and they were, useless. Yeah, they were big and thick and bulky. And They're ugh. so heavy, yeah. th and they don't dry you off. You're like, what is the point of this? So before we go, I just want to say... You said that five times. Go ahead and order from him directly because that's because he was taken out of all the box stores, which I think is horrible and cruel, but, you know, it's like that's the way it is. It's just the way it is. So well, we, we can change that. Yeah. So, so we don't buy have, directly We don't from have him. to go along with all that nonsense. No, we don't do cancel culture. It's ridiculous. <coughs> okay. So I love you guys. When like you're sleeping. This much. No, when they're awake, when they're asleep all the time. I love you so much. And I just cannot wait because next Friday I'm doing a solo show no matter what. If I have to come on there with no makeup at, or, and some ratty outfit because I was out Thursday. Friday? Thursday. Thursday is Todd's birthday. I'm going, I get home on Thursday day. We're going to celebrate his birthday. But you know what? Do you want to celebrate your birthday on Friday instead? Well, I'll probably be up skiing. You're not going skiing without me. <laughs> and this back isn't going skiing. She knows so my, she knows my knee is hammered. <laughs> I couldn't possibly go skiing. It just sounded good. I know. Uh, but, yeah, we should do something on Friday or Saturday. Well, it sounds like you're not going to be here all day. So it sounds like a golf day, John. Can you golf on Thursday? I'm only going to L.A. for like two days. And I don't have a license because the guy that stole your car stole my purse and my license was in it. Oh, you bet you talk your way out of that. So deal. I have to drive there Just because I can't your, get uh, on a plane. Bring and your Mickey Mouse Club card with you and sh that'll prove up who you are. Maybe my arrest warrant. Yeah, well, that should work. <laughs> well, actually, you know, you, do, you know what you do have? You actually have your witness subpoena. I do, but I, I, they, I, I need my license to get on a plane, so I'm driving. I don't know. It. They're letting people on planes with the arrest warrants, so I think if you just take no, your... No, they're not. They're letting certain people in on arrest I warrants. I would beg to say that if it's good enough for Peter, it's good enough for Paul. Well, anyway. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. That's what they say. <laughs> I have a goose, but I don't have a gander. And you know what my grandmother says, just to oh, leave everybody no, in a good please, mind. I'm begging you now. A fly is just oh, as likely no, to no, lie no, on no, no, apple no, no, pie no. as he is on shit. Oh, my I'm God. I'm just saying. All right. And on that note, do we have anything <laughs> to play while people say good night to each other? Not a thing. Other? Okay. I could find something find real some. fast. Well, ah. let's look and see what the turkeys and the chickens are doing. John's got and that. And Ron Hibbs, I see that you your uh, your surgery got um, moved, so we will be putting you in our prayers too. And um, let's see here. What the hell? Okay. Um, okay. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, I, I, I see that, Janie. Okay, so, and, and you know, there's a, there again, we can disagree and everything is fine. That's right. That's I the I have no of problem all. with that. All right. Um, uh, about the, but we can't disagree about the MyPillow uh, 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 towels. Everybody's going to agree. <laughs> Everybody is going to agree. But people are just looking for a fight all the time, so I'm not going there. What is but, wrong with but this? But here's stuff. what I'm going to do. Uh, why is it doing that? You can't get to the turkeys? Nothing is. The birds are up there, so go ahead and well, take it to Well, double click on the, on the best view, John. And everybody will say goodnight to each other, which is good. Oh, don't play that. We'll get kicked off. There. No, we didn't get kicked off. Yeah, we did. There All you right. go.